Our topic will be strategies for the short, small man that I'm going to showcase today. I'm going to interview myself. This is a text, a study, a very careful analysis, internal analysis, which is looking at the problem from the inside and from the outside, looking all the way around the problem, 360 degrees, and carefully describing exactly why the book was written, what it wants to accomplish. I am the subject of the book. I am the small, short man with no appearance, no uh, presence, nothing to attract you to me at all. I am the pariah. I am the man in pillory. And I'm talking to so many others out there in exactly the same position I'm in. This is a problem that has never been comprehended. It has never been understood before correctly. The accurate and correct questions have never been asked. It's never been interrogated and investigated in the proper way, which I'm doing right now. And I'm playing both parts. The fact, as you see before you, I am the short small man incarnate, or the small short man. I am the pariah. You've heard the question asked, what do you say after you say hello? But for a man like me and the others who are disenfranchised, how do you approach hello in the first place is the very problem. Because in order to be accepted, in order to be accepted, in order to survive visually with any woman in a social situation, I need to justify my presence every single moment. I need something to recommend me. I need something to keep me going to sustain me. And I need to be able to continuously assess and have the template or the understanding and comprehension of how to put my mind in the mind of the woman or anybody else completely and be able to assess where I stand with that woman. That means I had better be able to learn how to memorialize, to observe very carefully what's going on around me, to understand the legal and social aspects of the situation. And unfortunately, I'm stuck with if I want to survive, to act like a gentleman at all times. And I'm lucky if I, if I can survive. I generally need somebody to be my personality, somebody to walk me through it, somebody to help me survive. And what we try to do, or what I try to do, in the strategies for the short, small man, the small man, the tiny man, the insignificant man, the pariah, the man in pillory out there, is to get this man to stand on his own feet. But before we can do that, if we're dealing with a man in my situation who has pride, who has ego, who doesn't know the difference between what's inside and what's outside, he doesn't know how to listen accurately, but we know how to corner him, to get him to listen. We practice hard gestalt. Everything that's done is to be done in the now. All the inquiries, all the investigation is now. Now is power, now is reality, now is everything. Now encompasses whatever power, whatever reality there is. And in that sense, there's no determination. There's no labels. There's no judgment bar here. We're trying to comprehend, or I'm trying to comprehend what's going on. If I can't do that, what am I worth? I'm worthless. I'm trying to ask the right questions. I'm trying to observe accurately this is an empirical, wholly empirical investigation. It must be done and said in such a way that it's completely and thoroughly testable outside there. If it's not, it's worthless. 
and I stand for everything I say, I stand good for it, in such a way that I can be interrogated, I can be questioned on anything, and I will be the last man standing. Doesn't mean I'm right, but I'll listen, and I'll listen very, very carefully. The only thing I demand is respect and courtesy and a genuine inquiry. Too many people know the answers before the inquiry has even begun. And if you tell me you have a hotline to the Almighty or the higher power, and that's giving you all your answers and you're certain about your end why you're talking to me, you already know the answer. I'm making an investigation. But the short, small man, because of the height factor, very important socially, the height factor I can't overemphasize, that's very important. It's never been quizzed properly because everybody wants to practice tactful avoidance. Nobody wants to ask the right questions. Nobody wants to listen anymore. Nobody's honorable in a communication unless you force them to be it. How many people are reliable? How many people will say what they mean, mean what they say, and be reliable when they make an appointment to go through an investigation? Do they deliberately distract, distort, evade, double talk, double bind? How many individuals will have an honest communication, encounter and confrontation in the arena? We'll see what happens. Myself, I don't care how a man wants to come at me. Wants to come as a gentleman, that's fine. But if he wants to come to mock and to ridicule me for my head, if he wants to call me a dwarf, a troll, a gnome, and all of that, I'll listen to him. I'll paraphrase. I'll help him make the best argument he can against what I'm trying to say. And then I'm going to have something to say, and I will have a lot to say. I don't countenance a fool. I don't countenance somebody who comes into a discussion with bad intentions to begin with. He wants to show me up. He wants to make a fool out of me. I don't suffer an idiot like that. And the strategies for the short, small man. We confront the short, small man. He must come to us with an open mind. He has to be willing to be exposed. And he has to be willing to face up to who he is. We'll corner him. Or at least I will. I'll corner him. I'll confront him. I'll encounter him. You don't let him get away with anything. You're not a friend to the short, small man if you alibi for him, you rationalize for him, you try to justify him. This is a man who's been beaten down all his life. This is a man who's been badgered. He's been a patsy. What we're talking about here is a complete victim. And what I'm trying to do with strategies for the short, small man, never been done before, de-victimize this man. I'm also trying to force him to take back all the projections. I'm trying to force him to cast off the picture, the hero picture, that he's on his, pasted on his back through whose quirks and idiosyncrasies he's trying to cheat his way and hope he can be accepted by the women, and usually they will mock and ridicule him behind his back. Then he looks around for cool guy to intervene for him with his personality and open the door for him. And a cool guy in most cases, that's the jive guy, who knows how to talk the women up. In most cases, he'll fake him out and laugh at him, take his money and laugh at him. And then he has to be grateful to society or culture that gives him so many opportunities to project away all his power, to rationalize, to escape, 
to set up hero figures and live through them vicarious pretense. He's got to face the fact it is what it is. You're not going to change. When the patterns come in, when you see the patterns, you're not going to change them. That's what you have to deal with. If a man is unreliable to begin with, he's unreliable at 20, 40, and 80. If a man has no patience and can't focus on a tough communication, has to interrupt the communication, a phone call comes in, a distraction comes in. Of course, these are all means to confuse the communication. And that tells me my opponent is a man of no character. Or he disrespects me. Either way, either way, I'm going to expose it. The short, small man cannot suffer a fool. He cannot, cannot be a fool himself. The short, small man has to be bold and say what he means, mean what he's saying, ask for what he wants. It doesn't mean he has to get it. There are no entitlements here. There's no fairness. There's no equity. It is what it is. And he goes on. He has to live his life, and we have to teach him how to do it. Vicarious pretense. He has to live a lot of his life in fantasy recreations. In memorables. Maybe he sees something. He remembers it. Works it into a fantasy. He has to learn to give to himself what his society will not give him because of the way he looks. This has never been explored before. Nobody has had the courage, the fortitude, the experience and knowledge that I have to ask the right questions, to follow through. I practice a tough here and now gestalt, which is confrontive and encounter, pure confrontation and encounter in the now. It's exposing the issues. It's not letting a man run and hide. I don't let any man run and hide from me. And any man who wants to discuss something with me and doesn't come in good faith to have a good discussion, he knows the answers before the inquiry has begun. He disrespects me. And he tries to shortchange me in a conversation. I'll listen to the fool until I've had enough of him. This is too serious of a topic to play games with, the way I see it. I'm very serious about the strategies for the small, short man, because I am, the, I am who I'm talking about. I have the experience, and I've done the hard work that it takes to be completely confident of what I'm saying and how I'm presenting it. Strategies for the short, small man teach him if he is not full of pride and arrogance. And if he comes to me, he's got to come to me broken. Or I have to break him down to where he, uh, he knows, he experiences, not knows, but actually experiences in a lived sense what he is, what he's suffering and if he wants to come to me like a man, I'll talk to him like a man. I won't shortchange anybody in a communication. I won't run away from the tough, hard issues. I'm ready to answer any questions, any inquiries, anything anybody wants to ask me about what I'm saying. Anytime, any place, anywhere. That's how confident and certain I am concerning strategies for the small, short man. This man has been given a lot of encouragements, a lot of evasions, a lot of admonishments. They've talked into him, they've looked down at him, they've insulted him, and it has become for him a way of life. It's become for him normal. 
and my job, I shake him up. I shake up that normality which is dangerous. I shake him up right at the roots. I know what I'm talking about. I have the experience and I have the will behind everything I'm saying. The strategies for the small, short man are his only option, are his only hope. There are no guarantees. It's a long shot. Why? Because visually, like me, he's ridiculous looking. I have a big moon face, big gross features. I've been told I look like E.T. I look like a troll, a dwarf, and an old. Every insult there is to take out there, I've taken it. You can't insult me. I'm not embarrassable, but I'm an old man now. I'm not insultable. And I always have pushback. I'll push back on anybody, no matter how arrogant. And how if they want to look down at me and humiliate me and try to talk into me and advise me, I've learned long ago how to get rid of all my projections, all my heroes, and take back the power for myself. There's a way to do it. I know the way. I speak the way. I represent the way. But I don't promise castles in the air. I don't promise things that are impossible. Whatever the short, small man does, like me, the small man, the non-entity, visually ridiculous looking, laughed at, mocked and ridiculed. This is his only chance and it's a long shot chance. He's the fungus. He's got to grow on the woman coming in under the radar. He's the fungus. He's the foreign body. That's a, that she is, he is immediately repellent on the way he looks, just the visual aspects. He's the one that has to be set up. Somebody has to talk for him. Somebody has to represent him because he cannot represent himself. And you've got to realize this is a completely objective situation. It's nothing subjective about it. If he wants to be nauseatingly sentimental, he wants everybody to see what he sees, feel what he feels, when he feels it, and how he feels that he's a damn fool. Each has their own. None has the time. Nobody can give you any quality time to listen. Nobody even knows how to listen properly. Nobody knows what it means to let yourself listen and really hear. Nobody knows what it means to go through a good communication and to make certain to take care of any potential for any miscommunications. I do. Nobody knows how to be disciplined and mature in a communication. I do. Most people will alibi, they'll rationalize, they'll have an excuse, they'll distract, they'll confuse, they'll change pace to disorient me. Nobody will say, hey, I don't know what I'm talking about. I respect a man who says, I don't know what I'm talking about. I disrespect a man who cuts a communication short. Ah, important phone call to take care of. Somebody from Kalamazoo is calling. Somebody from New York, a cousin from New York is calling, and I've got to take the call. Hey, wait a minute. We're talking about something serious here. I'll get back to you. Of course, they never do. This is a man of no character a man of no word, and he's just pure entertainment. He's worthless in my book. When you sit down with me to talk, I'm serious. 
I don't play no games. When I'm talking about this subject matter, strategies for the small, short man, I'm very serious about it. Very serious. It's a serious topic. I have techniques, not advice, observations and opinions about how the short, small man can compensate for his severe limitations. He must be able to put his mind in the mind of the woman or the man of his opponent. He must know the legal aspects and the social aspects. He must be able to memorialize. He must be very observant. And mostly he must be Mishan. No mind. Still calm center. He must continuously represent himself. Who else is going to do it? But he must do it well. He must do it with courage. He must be bold and courageous. We teach him how to do that. He must learn to ask for what he wants, clear, explicit terms. That doesn't mean he has to get it. There's no guarantees. There's no equity. Equity is only for a fool. That's a legal term. It's a legal aspect. In the real world, it doesn't exist. And he must realize he's not competitive. In the predatorial sense of competition, he has to realize he's a pure prey. And that's the problem. He's passive. That's the problem. In a world that rewards being a predator with critical thinking behind it. He has to be able to think practically, rationally. I am a cynical, critical thinker. I look for argument. I look for evidence. But if somebody comes and knows all the answers, and he says he get, he's he got it from my higher power, whatever that higher power, he's got a hotline to the higher power, and he knows traditional values and traditional ethics and traditional morality. If you know all that, why are you talking to me? Why are you talking to me? You know all the answers. Why are you talking to me? Strategies for the small, short man is a major contribution to knowledge, to inquiry, to prompts. We don't take a problem like the short, small man and conveniently practice tactful avoidance and dust it under the rug and hope nobody will find it there. Sometimes the short, small man, a lot of times, has to compromise. If he has pride, he's a fool. Sometimes he has to come in, in a role, and work his way through with time. He needs patience. He needs fortitude. He needs to come in always as a gentleman. That's how he survives. And he has to develop the skill to put his mind in the mind of a woman or the man or whoever the hell heck he's talking to. Put his mind in their mind and think like they would think and ask, him, ask himself at all times, if I were she, if I were he, would I want to with me? Then he has to see himself visually. What do we look like visually in social scene? Then most importantly, and I'll finish with this, we've got to convince him in his mind he better get in the shape of his life. He better train and train hard with discipline, with maturity. He's got to build his body tough and hard. All of this does not work if the short, small man is percy and weak. All of this does not work. We're dealing with a small man. We're dealing with a man who has no presence and no appearance out there. We're building him up from the ground up. We're rewriting his biography, fully knowing in many instances environment 
overpowers biology. We're very serious strategies for the small short man.